I'm looking at the Grade 6 ABRSM new syllabus and I'm just going to, in this short video, just pull out a few um, highlights really from, from the lists here, maybe a, a one or two from each list. Starting with the A1, the Peschetti uh, Allegro. Now Peschetti is not very well known to pianists, but a Baroque a Venetian composer who wrote a lot of operas apparently. Um, and we can feel in this piece that it's already heading toward the, the classical idea of form because we've got here a, an extended binary movement. The first half is, is only, how many bars is it? 14 bars. And then the second half is, is about literally twice as long. And in that second half, he takes us through a variety of different keys before arriving at what feels like a recapitulation. So, you know, you can see where sonata form came out of this uh, Baroque um, binary. So how do we begin this? Uh, no dynamic marking, but because I see this opening is very bright and open, I would give it a forte, maybe, or a mezzo forte. We've got that idea at the beginning, which is imitated by the left hand um, a bar later in canon. So we've got this dialogue between the hands. Silly there because the composer writes a huge great G major chord with four notes in the left hand and three notes in the right hand implying sound, um, implying something louder or stronger. Now any chord in the Baroque period almost uh, lends itself uh, uh, to being arpeggiated so if you felt like it you could arpeggiate that. How did I articulate bit of shape to the semiquavers in that last line. Um, how do we manage the articulation in the left hand? Well I see the quavers as being staccato because they match what's going on in terms of their length. In terms of their length with what's going on in the in the right hand where we've got a main note and a filler note. Main filler. And if we match the left hand to those main notes in the right hand, we're in business. There is a, a technical difficulty or, or two, actually quite a lot of challenges in this piece, but if we look at the patterns that come up in bars, what is this, six and eight, eight and nine, we've got this pattern that goes through the whole piece. Where we have to open our hand and ping the fifth finger out then close the hand. So what you want to avoid doing is stretching out with the hand and keeping the fifth finger out. That would be fatal for this, even though it's intuitively understandable. So three, one, open, close. And I'm using my rotations there, forearm rotations, to, to make it through that passage freely, comfortably, and powerfully if I want it to be. And in terms of the dynamic, because the patterns are rising up here and falling down, I'm at liberty to just reflect that up-down journey in my articulation. So I'm going to move on now to the Schnurretoppen um, of Carl Nielsen, um, which translated is the spinning top. And we've got here, this is a witty kind of encore style, showy piece. Uh, it's a technical piece, but it's also a character piece where we've got to just uh, use our imagination. So you can see the spinning patterns in the right hand. And so it goes on in that vein. Lots of exciting sounds. It's going to be great fun to play um, and we get this wonderful glissando at the end which I see as starting from the E uh, if you look at bar th 37 there rather than from where the word glissando comes in in bar 38 I don't think he means that I think it's the whole thing uh, be careful of glissandos 
if you practice them too much you can pull the skin off so really most of the time when you practice you can just mime it so it just sounds like this and watch your rhythm there one two one two one two um, just in terms of how to make this piece feel really physically comfortable the patterns that we find in the right hand spinning are actually spun in the in the in the arm see how that works so if i were to hold my hand out into the fixed position and just operate my fingers like that i'd be tight um, before the end of the first bar I'd be, I would feel very uncoordinated and I certainly wouldn't be able to get through two pages of that without really um, I, well I think it would be impossible so there are two ways that we can move one is laterally meaning a lateral adjustment of the wrist and what that does is it lines up my, my supposedly weak fifth finger it isn't weak but it's only weak if I don't line up behind it See how it's lining it up with the key. So those are lateral adjustments. If you felt uh, you prefer the spin, the actual wrist circle, you can convert the lateral adjustments into circles by hoisting up on the pinky. And that hoisting motion here generates propulsion across the keyboard and takes me back to my thumb feels really free and effortless and actually very powerful when I want it to be. It's Mark Forte. So I think that's going to be a great piece, for, for going to be a great choice. Um, let me go over to Debussy's Page Dalman, Album Leaf, which is the B2 piece. Now, I, for those that like detail, you're, you're going to have a field day with this piece because almost every note's got an instruction. Um, either a phrasing instruction or a dynamic instruction or a tempo instruction. There's so many changes of tempo here, almost every bar there's something new. He tells you to get slower, then he tells you to push, then he tells you to uh, yeah, get faster, get slow, almost everywhere, um, per anime later on. So if you think of uh, just a composer who doesn't really want you to do your own thing. Debussy was one of the ultimate control freaks among composers because he tells you exactly what he wants you to do. Um, so for those that like that sort of level of instruction, you're going to have a really good time with this piece. Um, it's just marked comped, but there's no pedal markings given. So I would pedal here the first bar. in three we'd feel it in two in the left hand you don't need to do it quite as, as obviously as that but my pedaling is with the left hand direct pedaling down up and then we're back to the normal now here's a lovely little melody in the middle three notes it's really simple material but on the outside of it we've got um, a kind of dance accompaniment or dance background I mean fancy making a, a, all of that out of just three notes so it's very economical and, and beautifully constructed from the point of view of a musical structure is absolutely exquisite. So when you get to that um, per anime, don't hold on too long to these minims on the outside. The left 
left-hand minims are actually written with staccato dots. And given that we pedaled the whole bar, we can be quite loose about relaxed, uh, you know, relaxed releases that are hold my minimum down too long. The pedal will connect. And a very kind of a strange uh, epigrammatic ending. And then in time. That's the Debussy page d'album. I'm going to end by looking at Malcolm Arnold's The Buccaneer. Now Malcolm Arnold was a trumpeter and he wrote a lot of film music so we hear in this piece the character of this I suppose swashbuckling uh, anti-hero but it's, it's, it's like a lovable rogue you know the fact that he goes out stealing um, from people's ships uh, shouldn't endear him to us but the he, the, the kind of the character that he represents does. <laughs> so we've got this opening with repeated notes. Now you've got a problem there already. Do you do this fingering, which is suggested in the addition, which means a change of finger on each of the repeated notes? Or is there another way of Managing that. You can, if you want, just change finger once here, shift across to four in the right hand and keep with the two in the left. And provided you keep mobile on the repeated notes, you can manage the repeated notes with the same finger. So then what goes here? a technical difficulty in the right hand because we've got the accompaniment underneath and then the melody on the top. So we've really got to be able to divide our right hand up into two and it's marked forte. So what we'll do there is to really grasp the key and then thrust up. Thrust, thrust. See these, this thrust gives you um, a, immediately a bright sound, but it liberates the arm. So as soon as I've done the thrust, my arm is instantaneously free. So... And then in the next bar we, we can hear brass, can't we? Lots of contrasts, lots of dynamic um, variety. It's a really exciting piece. It's, going to, it's a kind of show piece again, an encore style piece that I think is going to just really be very popular. Those are just a few ideas about just a few of the pieces. If you want to know more, um, we have in the Online Academy extended walkthroughs of each of these pieces um, with focus on practice method, uh, technique, also style and interpretation. So do click on the links below and head over.